exactly sure what happened, but something happened. The reason this irritates me so much, beyond the fact that it's trespassing and stealing, Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California. This channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. Hey everybody, it is day five of corn harvest. I'm out checking the vineyard right now. I'm running irrigation, and if you guys saw a couple videos back, I had a ton of bad leaks, which hopefully I got them all, but I'm, I just wanna drive around and see if I can see anything really obvious before I head out to the tractor. I see a wet spot down there, but I think it's an old, I think it's the old leak that I fixed but I might walk back there just to be sure. Yeah, I think I'll go back there just to be 100% sure. Okay, we're all good. Everything looks pretty good so far. So we are gonna head out to the harvester and get day five rolling. If you guys are enjoying my videos and especially the harvest series, remember to hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it, guys. So this is our local grain elevators where we take all our corn. The first thing that happens when the trucks get to the elevators is they go and they've got this probe that they stick into the corn and it takes a moisture sample. Then they pull up on this piece here and that weighs the truck and the corn all together. Next, the truck goes to the back where it dumps all the corn out and then it's gonna head back over to that scale and get weighed without the corn. So that way we can get the weight of the corn alone. You know, that way we can minus off what the truck weighs. We're getting on the scale for the empty weight and then we'll get our yield. All right, we better quit messing around and head back to the farm. All right, back out in the field. Dad's been harvesting, uh, but we put my bank out wagon on the end of the field and there's a truck down on that end. So every pass he's just been dumping on each side so I'm gonna get my bank out wagon. We're gonna drive to the other side, dump the load, and then we're gonna keep on rolling today, guys. Day five of corn harvest. Woo! Cleaned my windows this morning. See how long that lasts. Here's a little shout out uh, to my pioneer rep. I saw someone on social media in this shirt and I screenshot it and sent it to him and was like, I need that shirt. And he delivered. Here's to women who farm. It's a pioneer shirt. My pioneer rep is Jason Root. He's been in a video before and he'll probably be in one this week because we're gonna be harvesting some plots, but I got my shirt. Well, no 
not exactly sure what happened, but something happened. Went out. Oh, in the auger? Oh. Bearing went out in the auger. Is that a big fix? We're gonna take some work, yeah. But we're done for today. Oh man. Done for today. Well, I think uh, Harvest 2020 is just following suit of 2020 in general. Okay, what happened? Oh, those belts weren't like that, right? You did no. that just now? No, they were like that. They were like that while you were driving? Yeah, they're oh. supposed to be inside and a bearing went out and they came out. Anyway, what I'm concerned about, I could just cut them because they're gonna. The one is definitely ruined, and I wouldn't run it. Anyway. So there. So these belts that are hanging here are supposed to be inside here. Yeah. And can you see the bearing? Bad. Yeah. All right. So we had a bearing go bad, and to move the tractor, we had to cut those two belts off. So my dad's driving the harvester back to the shop. The harvester is completely full. <sighs> bummer, bummer. So anyways, we're gonna drive it back to the shop and work on that for today. Sounds like we're done harvesting for today. All right, I'm in the field right now, so nobody worry. Um, but I am going to head out to get parts. So my dad and Vicente are gonna keep working um, on taking things apart and I'm gonna head and get parts. It is unfortunately an seatbelt alarm. Must have seatbelt on even in the field. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to drive an hour and it is 3.30 and they close at five. So I'm gonna get there just in time to get all the parts and if we don't get it fixed today, we'll get it fixed first thing in the morning. All right, time to head back. <sighs> All right, day six. It's been a slow morning. Well, slowish for me. The uh, My dad and the guys got the harvester all fixed. I changed the oil on my pickup. Um, I helped a little bit, but it's like, there's only so much room under the harvester to get things fixed. So we didn't need eight hands for this particular thing. So they got it fixed. I just got in my bank out wagon. I haven't even turned it on yet. And it's the first day that it really feels like fall. I know you probably can't really tell, but um, it's super windy, it's it's pretty windy, and it's really cool outside. I'm, I mean, it's lunchtime and I'm still in long sleeves. Normally by now it's like hot and yeah, so it's the first day that it actually is feeling a little fall-like. So hopefully we have a successful rest of day six and uh, we're gonna start rolling. <laughs> So a lot of you guys hear me call this a bank out wagon, which I don't think I've addressed this in any of the videos. Um, so if I did already, I apologize. Even six days start blending together. A bank out wagon, I hear, I think the most common name for it is a grain cart. I've heard some other names that I can't even think of right now. We call them bank out wagons. I am not the only person in the world that calls them bank out wagons. Basically everyone in my area calls them that. Um, there's also, I've been told Rice Farmer TV on YouTube also calls them bank out wagons. And the reason they are called bank out wagons here is because it used to be where once the crop was harvested, it went into the bank out wagon, and then it got done from the levee bank. So, you know, we are, we are surrounded by rivers here. So from the levee bank, they would pull up and they would dump the crop into a barge or a boat or, you know, whatever. So that's why these are called bank out wagons. Yes, it is a grain cart, but that's why we call it that. So it's actually like, really some history on where I live, the Sacramento River Delta, 
and uh, you know just part of Northern California so if you've wondered why I call it that now you know We're hoping because of this cooler weather, we won't have any pile-ups today. Yes, the corn is still dry, but you know, it's not as hot outside, so hopefully they'll get sucked through the header pretty good. We shall see. All right, Dad's doing the last little pass there. And then we got another field done. So we're heading back into the long field and uh, should get that field done today. All right, so we're on a pause because we're waiting for trucks. We have two trucks full. Matt said, um, I guess a lot of harvesters were broke down. So he sent trucks down south and now that people are getting their harvesters fixed and going, he's low on trucks. So we're gonna chill. Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Text Matt, where's my truck? <sighs> Shall we snack while we wait? What's my snack? Bam! Arroz con leche, AKA rice pudding. If you guys have never had rice pudding, this is the bomb. Um, I used to only get it at like restaurants and stuff like that. And then I recently saw it in the grocery store. So I just bought a couple to see if they were good. And they are. Milk from cows. Woo, it's so good. I love rice pudding. It's got like a little bit of cinnamon on the top. So this is today's snack guys. Look who finally decided to show up with a truck. It's only been waiting forever. All right, the truck has arrived. My bank out wagon is full. The harvester is full. So as soon as he parks, we'll have that truck full. Oh, this is fun. This is fun. We're full. Okay, that's one trailer full. My dad put his hopper in this trailer. Finished my snack already. Sad day. It was fast. It was fast snacking. Alrighty, we are back at it. Ooh, ooh. The one nice thing about it being a little windy is it blows the dust away from my dad's window so he can probably see a little bit better now at least. This is it for this, this field. All right, we are done with one of our landlord's ranches. Um, we only have two landlords, or my dad only has two landlords. So we're finished with one. Now we're doing what we call the back 60, which is my dad's, and then we'll do the home ranch. And then we have one landlord we always do last because it's like our wettest ground. It'll be really interesting to see if that corn is dry because it is always pretty wet. But we're moving right along. So someone just sent me a video of a pickup truck and a couple people out in another cornfield of ours chopping down the corn and taking it which is trespassing and stealing. Don't do this, people. Don't do this. The reason this irritates me so much 
beyond the fact that it's trespassing and stealing is that if they just came to us and asked, we would probably say yes, and then it would all be fine. But instead, people try to be like sneaky or sketchy, and they're, ugh. I already posted this on Instagram, and I've already, like within five minutes, I had other farmers respond. A walnut farmer messaged me saying, they have people do that, come into their walnut orchard and steal walnuts, but people don't realize how many walnuts get left behind after harvest. If, if, a, if someone just came to them and said, once you guys are done harvesting, can we come and pick up the walnuts that are left on the ground? They'd be like, yeah, go for it. And we did, we used to do that with a tomato um, grower. To can tomatoes, after they went through with the tomato harvester, there's stuff left behind that we could pick up and can tomatoes with. So if you get the urge to trespass on someone's farm, please, please don't do it. And this, this goes also for photos, okay? You would be surprised how many farmers will say okay if you just ask. And then you build a relationship. You might be able to go back to that spot every year. So please, please don't trespass. Build a relationship with a farmer if you want their product or if you want to go on their land. Thank you. This is our last truck of the day. So once we got the harvester fixed, everything went pretty smooth. I think tomorrow we're finally going to talk about the calmer corn header because even my dad mentioned that today. I said, yes, I've been waiting. So, sounds like we're gonna finally talk about that. Hopefully get a little bit of video of it and let my dad review it a bit now that he's been driving it for a few days. This truck is full. <coughs> yeah. <sighs> All right, that is a wrap for day six right yeah day six okay that's a wrap um if you guys are enjoying corn harvest remember to hit that thumbs up button subscribe if you'd like and i'll catch you guys for day seven see ya